Hello to all of my comic book geeks, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Yes, I'm back. I know it's been a very long time since I've posted a video. Uh, I guess I owe you guys all an explanation of uh, why I've been gone. And actually, frankly, every so often I do disappear uh, and I go a few months without posting videos. It's not because I, I lose interest or anything like that. Uh, basically, uh, I, I do work a lot. Uh, I work in healthcare, and on top of that, I do have um, some mental health issues. Uh, in case you want to know exactly what that is, I do have severe anxiety and depression, and uh, I do take medication for it and everything. But medication only will take you so far, and uh, so it, those of you out there who have a little bit of uh, mental health issues will probably can attest to the fact that it can be difficult to maintain consistency and maintain balance when uh, you, you do struggle with those types of things. But uh, I am back. I am going to start trying to post uh, weekly at least. Uh, the, the problem is, is, again, I love doing this. It's, it's great, but uh, usually work takes precedence over anything else uh, because that's what essentially supports my family. Uh, but also, uh, it's not really the time required to make the videos that's uh, time consuming. It's actually the the editing. Uh, editing, for those of you out there who make YouTube videos or have made videos in the past, you know that it's not actually making the video. It's the editing that is so time consuming. So uh, I'm going to kind of switch more to this uh, podcast format and not because I, you know, I'm lazy and I don't want to put the time and effort into it. It's just, this is a little bit more time friendly for me to be able to uh, just make videos and uh, be able to connect with you because I do love talking comic books. I've actually been reading comic books like crazy lately uh, because when I'm not working, I'll spend my free time either just hanging out with my kids and, and or being a recluse in this basement or upstairs and uh, reading comic books. Uh, but anyway, with all that out of the way, uh, I just wanted to let you all know because a few people have reached out to me and said, you know, hey, what the heck happened? Like, where are you? Are you okay? You know, you haven't posted in months and so that's basically what what, hap what happened, and uh, that's essentially why I kind of uh, disappear every so often. So it's kind of a balance between work, mental health, and just lack of time. So I'm uh, going to try to balance things out a little bit more, and like I said, bring you guys a video at least uh, once a week. So with that all out of the way, I wanted to dive um, into this week's topic, and, and that is uh, comic book and how, comic book distribution, essentially, and how comic books uh, are sold. Uh, because numerous times in the past, uh, I have mentioned that, you know, comic books might be able to sell better if they were more accessible to people. If uh, you found them in grocery stores, you found them on newsstands like you did in the past. In the past, you'd like, if you look at where I'm pointing here, ever, if you were raised or alive during the 1970s and 80s or even before that you probably remember these uh, comic book spinner racks that were pretty much everywhere you could find them in grocery stores drug store 7-elevens everywhere right uh, comic books were everywhere but then all of a sudden uh, well I guess it wasn't really all of a sudden but over time probably starting in the 1980s you started to see comic books carried uh, outside of comic book stores less and less. So the grocery stores were pulling out of selling comic books. The 7-Elevens were sell, pulling out of selling comic books. And, you know, you know, I, I was little in the 80s, but, you know, if I were cognizant at the time, I'd be like, what the heck? Well, like, why is the only place where I can buy comic books only at the comic book store? Like, that's kind of seems counterintuitive, counterintuitive from a, from a, a business perspective because if, if you want your product out there you want people um, to have easier access to it right uh, but I guess wrong because I've actually been researching the topic a little bit more and I found that uh, comic books will likely never be sold anywhere but comic book stores ever again. And essentially, here's why. Just let me take a little sip of my coffee here. Uh, so there are a lot of factors uh, playing into that, but I think we should go back to the 
time in the 1930s, at the height of the golden age in 1930s and 40s, uh, when essentially publishers could not keep comic books on the shelves when they were at the height of their popularity. So let's look at uh, the entertainment accessibility back in the 1930s and 40s. So um, aside from listening to the radio or reading a book, uh, if you were a kid, your only access to entertainment would be comic books, of course, in addition to playing outside or playing games with your friends, so on and so forth. Uh, because TV at the time was in its infancy, uh, a very, I don't even think anybody in the 1930s or forties had televisions in their households at the time, unless they were super, super rich. But again, radio was where, where it was at in the, uh, in the 1930s and forties. So with nothing better to do, right? All the drama, all the action, all the suspense that we find in television shows and movies today you would have to go to comic books. I mean, yeah, some kids were able to go to um, to the movie theater every, what it, was it, like Saturday, Sunday or something, and watch movie serials. So you would basically show up to a theater, pay your whatever, 10, 15 cents, and you'd be able to watch uh, a lineup of different shows or serials, and uh, you would have to go back to the theater the next week uh, to find out what happened to the character. Uh, I don't think there are any places in the world nowadays that have those that, that type of setup anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was basically movie serials, comic books, radio, playing outside, sports, and books essentially um, that provided kids and even adults with their entertainment. Uh, but as time went on, television started becoming more popular, okay? So uh, by, I read a stat here, is actually, if you look at this, I, I kind of just searched what percent of Americans had TV in the 1970s because uh, in, in, in all the research I've been doing about this topic, uh, I found by 1975, that's when people were noticing that comic book sales were in trouble. The comic book sales were not what they used to be. Contrary to popular belief, you know, most of us think that the Bronze Age was such an amazing time in uh, in comic books, and it was. I mean, there's so many great things were happening in comic books during the 1970s and even the 1980s. But uh, the truth of the matter was comic book sales were down, okay? And that kind of uh, happened simultaneously uh, with the increase in American households having television. So if you could see here between 1959 and 1970, the percentage of households in the US with at least one television went from 88% to 96%, okay? So you're, th so you're looking, by the 1970s, this, this, this television, something that was like new and exciting, and most people had one. Actually, there were more people that had one than didn't have one. 96% is a huge number of for people to have television in the 1970s. So the entertainment and the way people were spending their times was becoming increasingly more in front of a screen, which I think is really kind of hilarious because they say, you know, nowadays people can only entertain themselves in front of screens. No, like those people that are complaining about this generation of kids being in front of screens, they're in a way kind of guilty of that too, because by the 1970s, people were all watching TV. They were essentially watching TV for their uh, entertainment. Well, if you're spending more time watching television and you're getting your all your action and your drama and your, your mysteries um, from television shows, you're not going to be spending as much time reading. And that goes for books. That also goes for comic books. So uh, by the night by 1975, actually, uh, it was very noticeable that comic book sales were down by at least 50 percent than what they were in the past. And with each passing year, uh, comic book sales continued to decline. Like. Uh, for those of you that probably remember, DC Comics was in huge trouble uh, at the um, at the at the end of the 1970s. Like 
they were struggling a lot with their with a lot of their uh, older characters that were popular, like Superman and Batman. Like they were having a hard time staying relevant in this new modern age, right? Uh, Marvel was number one at the time, but uh, at the end of the day, they still weren't selling as many comic books as, say, DC Comics was selling in the 1940s and 50s. Now, why is that? Essentially, that is because of television. Okay, people were spending more time in front of screens. Hands down, you probably don't even need me to, to tell you that. But the other thing was that I, I didn't even know this, but comic books for your average retailer. So if you owned a drugstore, you owned a corner store, a grocery store, or anything like that, there was not money in comic books for you at all. The the the, the profit margin uh, on, a, on a comic book was very, very little, okay? And even comic book wholesalers were kind of getting tired of the distribution model because as most of you that know a little bit about comic book history know, that the the distribution model was wholesalers would give a number of books to the public to um, distributors uh, and uh, retail shops and outlets, and whatever the uh, say drugstore didn't sell or whatever the retailer did not sell, they can return it back to the wholesaler and get get a refund. And so basically, the retailers didn't find they were making a lot of profit off of the comic books. But also the wholesalers were getting annoyed because all of these comic books that weren't selling were coming back to them. So really, who's making the money here? So basically, as you got close towards uh, the end of the 1970s, now you have comic book publishers that are experimenting with direct market only books. Uh, if you were around early 1980s, um, you probably remember that there were a number of comic book titles. They weren't like super popular. They weren't like a, you know, comic book titles that uh, people were like itching to get. But there were a number of titles that the publishers were experimenting with that only could be purchased in comic book stores. Uh, one of those that I'm thinking of in particular, I have in my collection. It's um, Kazar the Savage. I know that was a, a comic book store only exclusive. You only could get that through the direct market, right? Uh, and basically the reason why that was happening was because these retailers did not want to carry comic books. It just wasn't worth it for them anymore. I've actually heard of people that are actually older than me, uh, that I've spoken to, uh, who used to buy comic books from, you know, seven 11s and things like that. And they, they would talk to a lot of, uh, the, the owners and they would say the only reason that they even carried comic books to begin to begin with is because kids that came in to buy comic books they were often buying other things so kid would go to 7-eleven buy a comic book uh, but then usually they were buying like a slurpee or some some candy or it just was something to bring them in so they could spend more money but the comic books themselves were not generating retailers significant amount of uh of profit so why carry them to begin with? And if you were, uh, say, a drugstore or uh, another type of, you know, store that carried print material, you're going to want to be, you know, um, giving that shelf space to things that were going to make you money. Profit mar margins on, like, say, dime novels or paperbacks, um, even magazines, was significantly higher. So if you only have a certain amount of space that you can dedicate to print material in your store, you're going to want to dedicate it to the print material that's going to bring you in money. If if comic books are only bringing you in, I don't know, at the time, maybe 10 cents profit for a, I don't know, 35 cent book, why are you going to sacrifice valuable shelf space on that comic book that's going to give you 10 cent profit when you can dedicate the shelf to say a novel, which will bring you in significantly more profit or life magazine or those big magazines from the seventies that, you know, sold rather well, you know, everything print essentially would make you more profit than a comic book. Right. So, uh, that's why these, this appearance of comic books being everywhere dwindled as time went on. 
people are spending more time watching TV, so they're not buying comic books as much. Well, now if people are not buying comic books as much, why are the retailers, uh, your average retailer, going to want to keep selling them, right? Because it's not they're not selling well, and they're not bringing you in much much profit. So it was the hardcore fans that kept the industry going by opening up these shops to sell the comic books. And honestly, that the first nail in the coffin was the comic book shops opening up in the 1980s um, because things got more, comic books became more exclusive, right? They were they were becoming more a, a product that was more niche. It wasn't something that was available widely to the public. And again, for good reason. So with time going on, you know, I'm thinking to myself, because before I, I was researching this, I, the, the thing I wanted to know was why, why can't comic books be sold at the grocery store? Okay. Um, why can't they be sold at a drugstore? I want, I, I'm that one person that wants to buy them out in the wild. I don't want to go to a comic book store to buy them. Okay, like I, I'm, I'm done with comic book stores. Essentially, I find all the back issues to be really overpriced and just, just not worth it. Um, plus, I'm not really liking what comic book push, publishers are putting out nowadays. Uh, that, that's just me. I guess I'm being like the grumpy old man. I'm not even that old yet. But um, yeah, at the end of the day. I realize that this is just never going to happen again. We're never going to get comic books sold on the newsstands or in comic book or sorry, or in drug stores or 7-Elevens ever again. For that reason, it's just not worth it for retailers to carry comic books. That on top of the fact that uh not many people read comic books anymore. Like the the amount of people that are actively reading comic books, I think dwindles every year. It's a very very niche type of of hobby. Um, to the fact where it even is considered a hobby back then, that would just be considered heck. Heck, I'm reading. <laughs> I'm just doing something to pass the time, right? It wasn't really considered a hobby back in the day, back in the 30s and 40s, right? So, um. That's why I kind of, um, I, I, I'm really impressed with uh, so, something like, say, Archie Comics. Um, I actually just recently started getting into Archie Comics because, uh, you know, in addition to, like, you know, my favorite Marvels and DCs, I, st I still read Marvel and DC, uh, but with Marvel and DC, I am um, pretty much exclusively just reading the trades, whether I'm, I'm, I'm buying them. A lot of times I'll just buy them used because I'm kind of cheap. <laughs> I, I'm strictly a, a reader of comic books now. Uh, I'm, I'm not a collector at all. I know you see a collection behind me and everything, but I haven't actively collected comic books. <sighs> Probably it's been over five, five, six years now. Uh, I love the hobby. I love reading them, but uh, the whole collecting aspect of, uh, of comic books just... Uh, it, it, it actually at several points during my um, comic book career, if that's what you want to call it, I've been turned off to comic books because of collecting. Uh, but that's a topic for another video. But like I was saying, um, I'm very uh, impressed with Archie Comics. Uh, I was sitting in a sitting in line in a, in a, at, a, at a standing in line at a grocery store, and. Uh, I saw this art. I saw some Archie comics. I picked up, picked them up. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna pick it up because that is literally the last comic book that you can buy in a grocery store. <laughs> and um, excuse me a second. <coughs> it's uh, it's the last comic book you can buy in a grocery store, and and they're fun. It's it's fun, mindless reading. There's there's basically no continuity with these. It's just a little fun little stories. I, I can read these when I eat. I don't have to bag and board them. It's fun, and you get a lot of their digest size, right? Like you get a lot of uh, a lot of story in here. And in Canada, these I live in Canada. These cost eight dollars. 
if Marvel and DC started doing digest size comic books that featured all of our favorite characters or even some new ones, I totally would dish out uh, $8. Heck, I would even dish out 10 uh, for digest size Marvel and DC comics. Uh, you know, and I know that Walmart was doing some of that with DC. Sorry, my throat's getting a little scratchy here. I think I'm dehydrating from talking to it so much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know uh, Marvel, or sorry, DC was doing the 100-page uh, Giants over at Walmart. I've never seen them. I don't go to Walmart very often. I don't even know if uh, they were doing that in Canada, if that was a U.S. Uh, exclusive thing. But uh, but yeah, I think that was that was a step in the right direction. But now I think that's... That model's even kind of uh, shifted over to more of a uh, uh, a bundle where you're spending whatever seven eight dollars and you're getting four random DC comics in it. I think that's cool too, you know. But I prefer the hundred page kind of more anthology uh, type book. But um, but heck, I mean, I think that's that's great that you you you're able to buy them at Walmart. Okay. Um, for those of you out there, are there any other digest comics that are available on, you know, out in the wild besides in comic book stores? Cause I like this because, um, you get a lot of story. Like if, if you're just in it for the entertainment, you just want to read it's, it's, it's great. I think it's wonderful. Okay. Uh, and it's really unfortunate that it's likely never going to happen again. Uh, because, Again, it's not worth it for retailers to uh, to carry comic books anymore. I don't know how Archie gets away with it. If you know a little bit more about how Archie is still able to sell their comics at grocery stores, uh, please let me know because I, you know, I think it's awesome that Archies are still available at grocery stores and drugstores. Actually, every grocery store and drugstore I go to in my area, I see Archie comics all the time. Actually, the other day. It was awesome. I got a set of um, three. It was like a pack of three Archie comics, like their digest size comics for like $9. Like you, you just can't go wrong. I think that's amazing. It's just great value. In terms of collectability, are these collectible? Probably not. They're probably not collectible. I don't know. Uh, I'll probably keep them, let my kids read them or something, but um, they're probably not collectible, but that's the thing. If you just want to read, it shouldn't it shouldn't matter. And I think uh, eight bucks, nine bucks to you know read something for fun, uh, or to read something worth reading instead of reading the cereal box while I'm eating. <laughs> um, I think it's awesome. So uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, that does it for our video today uh, and our discussion about comic book distribution and why comic books will never be sold in in the wild again will never be sold in grocery stores uh drug stores 7-elevens etc it's really sad but it's it's the reality of it there's just uh no one really reads the only thing that keeps comic books going nowadays i feel is just collecting unfortunately it's very unfortunate fortunate but Collecting is the only thing that keeps comic books going, uh, which is sad because there are great stories out there. Um, I've been reading my trades. I've been reading comic books like crazy right now, and I'm just so thoroughly enjoying everything that I'm reading. But uh, what are your thoughts on the matter? I'd love to hear from you all in the comments. Again, sorry, I've been a little bit absent for the past while, um, but I'd uh, love to hear from you all in the comments about this. Uh, do you think comic books will ever return to newsstands i don't know i think they won't just based on what i've been reading but uh i would like to hear if you think differently uh and i would like to hear what you think of the um the state of the of the comic book industry in general so that about does it for our video like i said uh it was great uh, that you all join me. Thank you for joining me. And like I said, I'm going to be trying to post at least weekly 
And uh, from now on, we're going to be kind of switching to this uh, more podcast style because it's it just it's a little bit more time friendly uh, for me. I just I don't have the time to edit, unfortunately. So uh, thank you all again for joining in. And uh, I will see you all in the next episode. Dante D signing off. Take care.